More than 400 people have now been charged in one of the most complex investigations the Department of Justice has ever faced, the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The FBI has called it an act of domestic terrorism, and one group has grabbed investigators' attention for their role, the Oath Keepers. The FBI describes them as an anti-government militia movement, among them current and former military and law enforcement. Their name is a reference to the oath they took to defend the U.S. Constitution. But unlike most other militia groups, we learn the Oath Keepers haven't been hiding. They've been armed and in plain sight, broadcasting plans to mobilize. The story will continue in a moment. If you were looking for a roadmap to January 6th... They're storming the f***ing Capitol now. Oh, my God! All you had to do was listen. Okay, guys, we're on open channel here now. These are the voices of far-right extremists communicating with each other in real time from homes across America and on the ground in Washington. Godspeed and fair winds to us. As some of them made their way to the Capitol. Trump's been trying to drain the swamp with a straw. We just brought a shop vac. Stop the steal. They were talking on a phone and computer app called Zello. It's unencrypted, like a walkie-talkie, and has an international user base of around 150 million. It's popular with truckers, disaster relief groups, activists, and extremists. And just be safe, be alert, and stay in groups. Anyone can listen to Zello, and Michael Lowinger did. Lowinger, a WNYC radio reporter, started working with the online extremist research group Militia Watch to understand how militia groups like to use Zello to recruit and communicate. Leading up to January 6th, we uncovered examples of militias saying things like revolution or bust, that they were using Zello to plan their travel to Washington, D.C., um, that they were going to have separate channels for people gathering intel and separate channels for boots on the ground. And they did. On January 6, Michael Lowinger found an open Stop the Steal conversation going on among 100 people on Zello and started recording. It wasn't until a couple days later that I started to realize how much planning must have gone into this event. And that's when I heard this mysterious woman narrating her march to the Capitol and eventually inside. We have a good group. We got about 30, 40 of us. We're sticking together and sticking to the plan. That mysterious woman is Jessica Watkins, a 38-year-old Army veteran. She's the leader of a self-described Ohio militia group and member of the Oath Keepers. We're moving on to Capitol now. I'll give you a boots on the ground update here in a few. Oath that's Watkins with the goggles, and here with nine other Oath Keepers in battle gear. They move in a stacked military formation, methodically working through the crowd, up the Capitol steps, towards the doors, just as the Capitol doors are breached. On Zello, others cheer her on. You are executing citizens' arrests. As she offers a play-by-play. We are in the main dome right now. We are rocking it. They're throwing grenades. They're freaking shooting people with paintballs, but we're in here. Get it, Jess. Do your shit. This is what we lived up for. Everything we trained for. Overran the Capitol. We're in the Capitol, bro. For weeks, extremist watchdogs like the Anti-Defamation League, national news outlets, and journalists like Michael Lowinger had been warning of possible violence on the 6th. If they had been paying attention to the whole network of far-right groups online that were extremely vocal and very public about what they wanted to happen. I don't believe we would have seen um, so many people break into the Capitol. Police are doing nothing. They're not even trying to stop us at this point. Members told us at least 40 Oath Keepers were at the January 6th rally, Go back up. with some, seen here, providing security to Trump associate Roger Stone. Thirteen people associated with the Oath Keepers have been charged with federal crimes, including Jess Watkins, who has pled not guilty. The Zello recordings are helping prosecutors make their case. 
Zello has since deleted 2,000 of these extremist channels. That is just a small demonstration of capability that luckily didn't turn into a more lethal threat. Javed Ali is a former NSC senior director and was a counterterrorism official at the FBI under the Trump administration. I think what makes the Oath Keepers um, unique and, and challenging beyond the fact that they're a formal group with chapters all over the country is that a large percentage have tactical training and operational experience in either the military or law enforcement that at least gives them a capability that a lot of other people in this far right space don't have. The story of Oath Keepers is very much the story of this man. Right. I'm Stuart Rhodes. I'm the founder of Oath Keepers. In 2009, in Lexington, Massachusetts, where the first shots were fired in the Revolutionary War, Stuart Rhodes founded the Oath Keepers in response to the election of Barack Obama. There's no expiration date on that oath. Hey. It is for life. Rhodes enlisted in the Army at 18 and was honorably discharged at 24. He went on to graduate from Yale Law School and became a constitutionalist, later warning America was on the brink of government tyranny. In 2010, he told Bill O'Reilly that it was up to current and former members of the military and police who took an oath to defend the Constitution to stop that tyranny. Commander-in-Chief Zia is the president. By our Constitution, mm -hmm. if he issues an order, are you telling people not to obey the order if they don't like it? If it's unconstitutional, yes. So each soldier makes up his mind whether the order he's given is constitutional or not? It's a heavy burden to me. But if, if you obey a, an unlawful order, you can also be in trouble. The group recruited thousands, opening up chapters across the country. They formed a board of directors and 10 orders to live by, elevating themselves to guardians of the Republic and the Constitution, vowing to protect against mass gun confiscation and a Marxist invasion. In 2014, they took their fight to the Nevada desert. Rhodes sent armed Oath Keepers to defend the rancher Cliven Bundy, who was in a 20-year battle with the federal government about public land use. And in 2015, months after the police shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, Oath Keepers arrived with AR-15-style weapons, saying they were there to protect businesses. But in 2016, the Oath Keepers believed they finally had an ally in the White House. We will build a great wall along the southern border. When President Trump warned of an invasion of undocumented migrants, the Oath Keepers called on members to patrol the border. And this fall, when President Trump warned of election fraud, founder Stuart Rhodes appeared on InfoWars, conspiracist Alex Jones's talk show, setting the stage for what was to come on January 6th. We have men already stationed outside D.C. as a nuclear option. In case they attempt to remove the president illegally, we will step in and stop it. It's either President Trump is encouraged and, and bolstered and strengthened to do what he must do, or we wind up in a, in a bloody fight. We all know that. The fight's coming. But for some Oath Keepers, the rhetoric was too much. Former board members told us Rhodes adopted a more violent, malicious-style ideology, and it was tearing apart the group. Chapters in Virginia and North Carolina broke ties with National well before the six, citing a departure from the original mission. Others distanced themselves after the insurrection. Please rise for the invocation. Including the country's largest chapter in Arizona, where Jim Arroyo is vice president. While Arroyo doesn't think the election was legitimate, he doesn't think anyone should have stormed the Capitol. I want to congratulate Stuart Rhodes and his 10 militia buddies for winning first place in the ultimate dumbass contest, because that's what it was. That goes against everything we've ever taught, everything we believe in. It was pre-planned, it was pre-staged. 10 guys go and do something stupid, and suddenly we're the devil. In September, some Arizona members showed up armed at a Black Lives Matter protest in Prescott. Jim Arroyo told us law enforcement coordinated with him to help keep the peace. The local sheriff's department told us they didn't ask for their help. The critics of your presence there say, like, these are just a bunch of guys who are wannabes and they yeah. can't wait to get dressed up and play the role. Our guys are very experienced. We have active duty law enforcement in our organization that are helping to train us. We can blend in with our law enforcement. In fact, in a lot of cases, our training is much more advanced because of our military backgrounds. 
there's nothing I love more than my AR-15 and my chainsaw, and I don't know which one I like more. Jim Arroyo invited us to a meeting to see for ourselves. The crowd, mostly retirees, meet twice a month. Feel how warm that is? To talk about how to survive disasters like forest fires. These things are great. Attacks on the power grid and civil war. So that's why we talk about civil unrest, civil war. It's not a joke. This can happen, and we need to be ready for it. Yesterday, Jim said, do you think we're in a civil war? And everybody nodded their heads and said yes. Kathy York, Gary Harworth, and Mike Rice are members. Do you all think that we are in the middle of a civil war? I think that we are. We've got good versus evil right now going on in our country. Who do you view as evil? Anybody that doesn't support our Constitution and follow it, they, they're trying to change it. This country is divided right down the middle, and you're on one side or the other. People have to realize that when things go crazy, things get a little chaos -y around you, you have to be able to take care of yourself, defend yourself, protect your family, those you love. That's part of the Constitution. So on January 6th, when you see, you know, these people wearing that same emblem storm into the Capitol, what was your reaction? Some of those people with those keepers could have been BLM. They could it could have been, have been a false anybody. flag as far as I'm concerned. You don't think they were Oath Keepers? Well, they, they we, don't been. we don't know. We don't know. We weren't there. And they're stupid people. It's stupid. We don't do that. That's not Oath Keepers. How are you going to take an oath to defend the Constitution and then try to disturb yeah. a, a, a session of Congress during what's supposed to be one of our most precious political things, you know, the transfer of power? How are you going to do that? I haven't had contact with Stuart Rhodes. He refuses to talk to us. Why is that? You're the biggest Oath Keepers group. Why wouldn't you be talking we to us? We have made multiple attempts through National. And my honest opinion is if, if there's any honor left in this organization at the upper levels, they will deal with it. Photos and phone records place Stuart Rhodes on the Capitol steps on January 6, communicating with Oath Keepers before they breached the doors. But no charges have been brought against him. Rhodes declined to speak with 60 Minutes to tell his side of the story. He did appear again last month on InfoWars, this time from his car, saying he didn't order Oath Keepers to enter the Capitol, but defended the members who are now in jail and criticized those who put them there. So they are criminalizing patriotism. One Oath Keeper has pled guilty and agreed to cooperate in the ongoing investigation, as new evidence suggests members stashed weapons at a nearby hotel as part of a quick reaction force. Evidence, a federal judge says, is among the most troubling he has seen. Sources tell us prosecutors are looking to build a case against Stuart Rhodes and possible separate charges against the national organization.